before you plug in the device, you need to make sure you've installed the drivers for the Wemos D1 Mini. This board uses the CH340 drivers, and you can do a search on the internet to download those. I like to get them from SparkFun. Uh, they're pretty well trusted. Um, they also have them for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Uh, basically, just download the driver software, install it, and you may need to reboot your system for the device uh, driver to show up as a COM port. In Mac, it's going to show up as a, another device um, to the USB. Once you have installed them and uh, you can confirm that they're working by plugging it in, you'll get the confirmation audio sound and that it will then be plugged in. From there, you need to go to GitHub and you can just search this up, node MCU Pi Flasher and it usually comes right up on top, node MCU Pi Flasher and from here you go just get the, the latest release uh, and this is the latest one here and they have it for Mac uh, and Windows. So download the version you're using. Um, I'm using the Windows version. Once you've downloaded this, and then also download the pre-compiled binary for the QLite OSD, you'll put those into a directory. And I have it extracted here. This is the binary file that we're going to load on the device. So run the Pi Flasher, the Node MCU. And you'll know that the device is showing up as a COM port when it shows up in this list right here. This is a reload button to refresh if you plugged it in while it was already started. Select that and then go and select the binary file that you are going to load. Uh, this is the one I, I want to load on here with GPS. And then accept, I think, the rest of the defaults, 1150-200 baud rate, dual I.O., and then no for the erase flash. This right here is the button that you would press to load the firmware. You can watch the output. This is uh, loading the percentage here. Once it is done out, uh, downloading, I would unplug it, plug it back in, and you should be able to then see the light flashing. So it's done loading. We'll go ahead and unplug this. Plug it back in. And when the light is flashing consistently like this, it's running in OSD mode. It's ready to run. You could then plug in your GPS, plug it into your video transmitter, the DJI, and, and make sure you have enabled the OSD feature in your goggles so that it'll assemble and uh, my next video will I'll show you how to compile the source code yourself so you can move things around on the screen if you don't like where the default locations are you can turn things off if you're not using GPS and you don't want to see any of that um, I'll show you how to remove that but by but for this this is the default configuration it supports the Wi-Fi mode GPS logging and full GPS. You'll get everything on this OSD right now, uh, excluding the RSSI. Okay. I have mounted a QLite OSD in one of my favorite FPV platforms. It's one of my Stingrays. Um, I've mounted it on the inside here, and up on the outside right here is the DJI. Uh, Vista unit and want to show you how to put it into Wi-Fi mode so if you see I have the Wi-Fi button right here and GPS these four pins these three pins is power ground and transmit out to the Vista unit so that's my on the OSD that um, so typically before I I plug it in um, and I want to do the Wi-Fi mode, 
I'll unplug the video transmitter because I don't want the Vista unit to overheat. And so I'll just show what I'll do. So it's not going to be powering the, the air unit when I go into Wi-Fi mode. So to do this, you'll just power on the, the OSD like you normally do for a flight. So I have it powered on right here. And uh, you can see the blue light is flashing right down here. That's in OSD mode. It's feeding uh, telemetry information. And now um, if I press and hold this button right here for three seconds, you'll see that the light will go solid. That indicates that it's now in Wi-Fi mode and will show up as a access point we should be able to see the access point show up in our network and you can do this from your phone or from your computer um, I usually do it from my phone but I'm gonna show it on the computer it's easier to capture and show so you you will see a Q-Lite OSD and then the last six digits on the access point that shows up will come from the unique serial number of the Wemos D1 Mini that way if you have multiple uh, people or or even multiple OSDs that are in Wi-Fi mode, they should have a unique name. You can click on this. I don't want it to connect automatically, but I'm going to go ahead and, and then click Connect. It's going to ask for the password, and for the access point, the code requires an eight-digit password, and the default one in the code is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you would connect. So we're connected now, no internet. We can open up a new tab, and the address for this is going to be 192.168.4.1. That's the IP address that's always going to be assigned to your, uh, well, to the access point. And so when you're connected, you can hit the device IP with that. You that. So when you hit it, it's immediately going to feed back. Um, the files that it has logged and so these are different flights that I have taken um, and their file sizes and the date and time stamps and uh, this also tells you how much use space is left on logging it'll log forever it has about two megabytes but each flight is going to be around 20 kilobytes or so that's probably about an eight or nine minute flight so at this point you can download one of these and it's a standard GPX file format this is flight number eight just save it after opening up Google Earth Earth Pro um, you can import the file by going to GPS and then selecting import from file um, and then also you can remove the adjust altitude to ground height. If you uncheck this, this will show the altitude of the flight as well. And then click import. And you locate the file wherever you saved it on your computer or your phone. Open it. And then it will import it. Okay. So from here, we can do a tilt, and we can see, uh, zoom in, you can see where we were, and also the altitude in relationship with the logging on the device, and delete all files, basically it, it just reformats it or you can turn off the Wi-Fi right here so if you notice now it's flashing again down here and it's ready to go we could plug back in uh, the VTX the video transmitter for the DJI unit and it's fully functioning I wanted to show that I also loaded this exact same file 
onto my phone and there's lots of applications that can view the um, GPX file format. It's a standard XML format used by several geo tracking services and applications including Google Earth. Um, but if I have, I found this one for on the, the Android phone, it's called GeoTracker. It's free. Um, I loaded the the file, and you can see here, and you can you can see the flight. You can even zoom in. It shows you the start and stop point of the tracking where we landed and and took off from, and for the entire flight. And the other cool thing is the statistics tab that you get up here. And if you click on the statistics, it'll show the statistics for the flight. It shows you uh, how many miles you covered in that flight. I co covered 4.5 miles just flying around in circles there. And my max speed, I hit 57 miles an hour, the average speed 31. This is a graph right down here. It shows your speed over the entire flight. And then down here, it shows your uh, altitude max altitude I hit in that flight was 287 feet above the starting point it shows the actual uh, um, altitude from sea level as well this graph down here shows your altitude over the entire flight and other interesting information about that and you can switch back and see the map and this is kind of a, a useful thing I, I I really kind of enjoy being able to look at the altitude and, and statistics of my flight, how far I, f I flew, and where I actually covered. And I hope you find it interesting as well.